Here's an engine I removed recently from an ATC 90. It was brought to me by Fred, my son-in-law. He said it was throwing oil and they couldn't keep it because he and my daughter were moving and didn't have room for it. So anyway, he brought it to me and um, I didn't really get exactly where it's throwing oil from, but I thought I'd start it up and, you know, and figure it out. So before I started, I said, man, I'd be better check the oil level. And found mm -hmm. out the dipstick's broken off. It's an aftermarket uh, dipstick and uh, oil breather, crankcase breather. So um, I don't want to start up. I'm afraid the dipstick may be broken off. It might be down inside the, uh, the right side case. So it was kicking around the garage for a while. And I also noticed every time it moved it, there was a puddle of oil right under the, the shift shaft here. see it's kind of wet I don't know how well it shows up in the camera but it looks like the shift shaft seal is leaking and it's even wetter below but probably dripped down there so I plan to change this seal and while I'm at it I think I'll change all the seals and I'll have the opportunity to make a, a video of changing the uh, ATC 90 oil seals there's six of them all together there's starting at the top, there's one here behind the, um, the the points base, and there's another one here behind the alternator, and um, there's one up here where the um, let's see where the uh, neutral indicator is. That's the end of the shift drum, and down here where the shift shaft is, this is the one that leaks really commonly, and probably because it's the lowest one, and you know there's always oil on the other side of it. You start seeing a puddle of oil under your bike, you're trying to move it. Good chance it's that oil seal. And here's a funny setup here on the uh, the uh, drive sprocket for the main drive chain. It's between the uh, the transmission and the sub transmission. The sub the main transmission is in this case here, and the sub transmission is in this case here. It has a little shift lever below it. Um, but there's an oil seal on either side of this uh, sprocket and they can leak. It looks kind of wet in there too. So I suspect that's the one that was actually throwing the oil. It's probably throwing it up on the chain and then throwing it who knows where. It's not supposed to be an automatic chain lubricator. <laughs> it's supposed to be dry in there. And you look and you oil the chain separately. So um, to uh, change these seals, you can do them all from this side. Taking this, this case off, this you have to take this left side case off. To take that off, you have to take the rotor off and the stator to get to the uh, oil seal behind it. You also have to take this sub transmission out and you, and you have to take this neutral indicator off. So I'll do that now. And then after that, I'm gonna take the right side cover off and see if that dipstick is in there and um, clean the oil filters there's two oil filters on these things people think there's no oil filters but there's a filter screen and this is a centrifugal filter so I'll go ahead and clean those while I'm at it and um, then put it back together again well we're inside now the wind was kind of annoying blowing in the microphone so I think I'll do the rest of this inside before we get started, let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need, the special tools. We, you still need the normal wrenches and sockets and things, but um, one thing this is this uh, impact screwdriver, and it has removable bits, and this is a number three bit. You can tell it's kind of blunt on the end, and we'll also need a number two bit, and it's a little bit sharper. And a number of th three screwdriver, it's the same thing. It's kind of blunt on the end, Phillips screwdriver. And you'll need the snap ring pliers. 
There's a snap ring inside the uh, sub transmission. Will you need this to take off? This is a seal remover. You might get away without it, and you won't need it for this here. You know, the shift, the shift shaft oil seal. And then there's the oil seals, and they're in various sizes. And um, we're gonna replace six of them that look like this. I guess there's a lot more oil seals. I mean, everything, like a gaskets and O-rings and everything are oil seals. There's a lot of places these engines can leak oil. But anyway, we're gonna replace these six. And there's, there's a metal ring inside them. And then there's some hard rubber where it fits into the case. And then this part here is a little bit softer where it fits around the shaft and there's a, a spring inside that goes around it. And that's how they're constructed. So anyway, um, we're gonna have to take this uh, left side case off. And um, that's where, if you still have the, uh, the original screws in, that's where you're gonna need your impact screwdriver. And um, this one, the previous one, replaced with Allen head screws, which is nicer because they won't be stripped out as easily. But before we take the side case off, we have to take the rotor out and the sub-transmission. So, I don't know if I showed this. This is, this is a rotor puller. We'll take this bolt out and then we'll use the uh, rotor puller. So for now, we're gonna take this, this bolt off. It's a 14 millimeter head on it. Okay, and then we're gonna uh, screw this down in there. I like to put a little oil or grease on it ahead of time. Well, I got it to pop loose off camera. I did wind up bending this starter key, so I'll have to get a new one of them. Anyway, there it is. There's a keyway in here and a Whitworth key along the side here somewhere. You know, the key, the key is in here. Sometimes you get stuck in here. Sometimes you get stuck on the crankshaft. Okay, there's um, three Phillips head screws, and I don't know how tight they're gonna be. So we'll need the uh, impact screwdriver for them, number three. Let me put it down here. The way you work these things is you clean out the screw so it's the bit fits in real tight. And then you turn it clockwise if that's the way you're going. And then you hit it with a hammer, a whack or two. That loosened it up. So we'll take those three screws off and then we'll pull the, um, the stator out. Okay, here's one of the seals. Right down here. And it's kind of hard to see if it was leaking now. It's fairly clean under, under there, actually. But the bottom of the case here is really dirty. And there's a starter here and a gasket, the pull start. And there's a little weep hole here. So, the, I mean, there's no oil inside. So I guess the, the, the gasket is just like a dust seal. And then, then the water can come out of here. 
So, anyway, there's access to one. I'm going to pull this out right now, but um, I'm having a little trouble getting it out because it's really dirty in there. So I'm going to clean it out, and then what I do is I pry it. Every other one of these is you can get underneath it and pry it out. Um, in case you're wondering why I'm taking this engine apart while it's dirty, I thought maybe we could see a little bit better where the leaks were as we take it apart. Of course, I'll clean it up before I put it together. Well, I was having trouble getting this uh, stator out, so I cleaned it off really good and sprayed some WD-40 and some carburetor cleaner in there, let it soak overnight. And um, it's the next day now. And the, here's the way I normally take them off. If they're, I can't get them off by my hands. This, uh, these channel locks will just fit under here. And they won't touch the, uh, the coils or the wires connecting the coils. And I squeeze on them. But that didn't even work. So I took a nut and bolt here. And I stuck, I stuck it through here, put, put the nut on the bottom to where it's just sticking up, and then I pried it up and I got it to come loose. So, there's the stator. So, the next step is to take the uh, sub transmission apart. But before I do that, And before I forget, I want to talk about this um, air breather. Because I haven't been able to find out any information about this on the internet and YouTube. It's a aftermarket um, oil breather, crankcase breather. It was placed on the um, on the uh, crankcase cover and it's got some kind of a filter or something on it. I don't know what this is. I don't know why you would filter the, the crankcase. Okay, the, um, the newer engines on the, on the 110s and um, some of the other ones, they have a crankcase breather coming out of the actual crankcase here. It comes out of here and there's a tube coming back. But um, they don't have that on this. And I didn't know for the longest time, I thought it didn't have a crankcase breather. But one of the, the um, people that watches my YouTube channel, they pointed it out to me that there is a breather. And I'll show you where it is. Can you see this hole here? Let me, let me turn it a little bit more. Yeah, there's a hole right here in the bottom. And it goes all the way to the top of the engine. And, you know, where the fumes are. So the fumes will actually come out through that hole. It does have a breather, and I guess it wasn't adequate when they uh, when they increased the power on this engine because this engine's been been bored, and I don't know what else they've done to it. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe if somebody was around back in the day, they could tell me. I mean, I was around then, but um, I wasn't working on these engines. I was running a company and trying to support the family. Okay. Back to the uh, the disassembly, and okay, we're going to take this uh, sub transmission off. Yeah, I won't bore you with the details. What you do is you take off these four screws, and there is a snap ring inside. You'll you'll see it. And you, and you start, you pull the gears off and you may have to work this uh, 
shift lever a little bit and you pull all the gears out and then uh, I'll do that offline and I'll come back to you. Okay, the sub transmission gears are all out now. And the next step is to remove this E-clip and the um, neutral pointer. Then we want to clean this shift shaft off. It has a lot of baked on grease and dirt and what have you. And I want to clean that up so the case will slip off and also the, uh, the seal will slip off and the new one will slip on. And then we take these, uh, these bolts off around the case and I'll do that offline. I'll get back to you. Just occurred to me, I forgot a very important step. Anybody catch it? Anyway, it might be a good idea to drain the oil. Because when I take this cover off, there's the, the um, cam tensioner parts are under here, and they're all in oil. So um, I'm going to drain the oil now, and then I'll take these, these uh, screws off and pull the cover. Well, it did have some oil in it. I thought maybe, judging by all the messes it made all over the garage floor, that it, it all dripped out through the uh, shift shaft seal. But I guess not. And what I do is I drain it, I'll tip it back like this a little bit. And I guess my arm's probably in the way of the camera. And I usually get a little bit more oil out. And I'll do this for a while. And then when I pull the covers off, it's still oil leaks out and all over the workbench, but could be more. So I'll do this for a while. And then I'll put that engine back in the other that wooden box I have. It holds it a lot better than these these do. But this is this is good for changing the oil. Because I get I can get the pan back on. Well, I may have found another problem. I've been loosening up these screws here all around, and this one here was not on very tight. This one down here. So I tried tightening it up, and it's not catching, it's just going around. So I don't know if it's too short, if it stripped out the threads. Um, this should be the same size as all the others. There's a um, most of them are uh, shorter size. There's two longer ones here that are the same. And this one's a little bit shorter than the longest one. But this should be the same length as these, so. And I'll check with the specs. Maybe it's a good thing I didn't clean the engine up. We'll see if any oil was leaking past the gasket. I just assumed that because it was so dirty here, it was dripping down from the, from the, um, shift shaft seal onto here and that still could be the case okay well i'll finish taking the screws off and we'll see what we find Okay, well, this one's definitely shorter. And it looks like the threads are worn just on the very tip. So we might be in luck. I'm gonna stop right now and look at the specs and see just exactly what length these are supposed to be. Because these were changed. These are Allen Ed um, bolts and our screws. And they're supposed to have Phillip heads, or they originally came with Phillip heads. You can put whatever you want in. Okay, the correct size for these screws, the short ones, is 25 millimeters. And this one here, this is the one that wouldn't tighten up. It's only 20 millimeters long. And this one here, well, it's almost long enough. It's 24 millimeters. It seemed to work okay. So anyway, I'll definitely change the short one. I might change them all. And um, as for these other ones up here, these longer ones, I'll um, I'll call it out when I uh, do the reassembly if you want. 
so you make sure you have the right sizes too. Okay, that's all of them. Since I missed one, should come right off now. Just make sure there's no washer stuck to the back of this. Shouldn't be, okay. Well, look at this seal here, it looks like it's Looks like it's had some oil getting by it. That's the one for the sprocket. Let's see, right here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe some oil is getting by here too. But I'll put a new gasket on and the right screws when I put it back together again. Okay, now we can get the sprocket off. Let's take a look at that oil seal too. That's another place where I was suspecting it was throwing oil from. Can't really tell too much on that one. Won't hurt to change it though. Okay, we have access to all of the seal except for the one in here in the point space. So might as well get them all and we'll get this out now too. And for this we use a number two tip on the uh, impact driver. I guess I could check first to see if it's on, on real tight. That wasn't. Oh, okay, we won't need the impact driver. Okay, I think I'm going to Oh, it's already got a mark. It's because it, it's a mark here to show where the uh, this plate goes. So the, the timing will get off when I take this off. So we can we can uh, put the spark in advance back to where it was before. But there's these three screws and they can be on real tight. You better check them too. Oh, that wasn't very tight. Take the spark advance off now. Should just slide off. The springs look real nice. That's that's good. Sometimes these are all rusty. Now there is a little pin here. Um, you don't really have to take it out, but um, if it's loose, you might want to take it out so it doesn't fall off. It won't be in the way of the 
of the, um, the oil seal when you take it off. Okay, so here's the oil seal we're going to replace. And let me check. I don't want that pin to fall out. Okay, well, we got it apart enough now to get to all the oil seals. So the next step is to clean up all these parts before I start putting the seals back in. But before that, I'm curious about that dipstick still. So I'm gonna take off the, uh, the right crankcase cover and see what's going on under there. We're looking at the other side of the engine now, the, the right side, and to get this cover off, all we need to do is take these screws off around the side and then break it loose. Um, under here are the clutch adjusting parts. And um, we'll deal with this when we reassemble the, the engine. So I won't bore you again with the uh, watching me take the screws off. I'll, I'll do it then, then get back to the video. Okay, screws are all out, so let's see if this, how hard this is to break loose. Some guys say you're supposed to use a softer hammer, and they're probably right, but I just won't hit it very hard. There are cracks, so this is coming out. So tempting to stick a screwdriver in there and pry on it, but I know you can't do that. It's aluminum and we don't want it to develop an oil leak. It's always a good idea to look and see if I missed a screw, which I did. Wasn't even loosened. Well, there's no dipstick in here. Can't say I'm too surprised. It would have been all chewed up. Could have heard something, I guess. But while I have it apart, let's check the oil filters. This filter screen here, and fairly clean. And I'll clean it once I have it apart. And there's a centrifugal filter in the clutch. A lot of people don't know about these, but. They can be really dirty. In an old machine like this, I don't know if it's ever been cleaned. So I'm going to do that. This just slips off. And this will come off. Actually, I'll show. I'm going to reassemble a little more clearly. This, this comes off here. There's a bearing. And, and there's a cover here with two Phillips head screws. Sometimes those can be on really tight. Be 
Okay, this is the centrifugal oil filter. And it's got a lot of crud on it. See that? So I gotta clean that all off. To take the clutch off, you do need a special tool here. And these dogs here will fit into a, a special nut in the clutch. There's a couple tabs you pull back and uh, you unscrew it. And I'll show you when I get it out. Okay, this is the special note I was talking about. And this is kind of like a lock washer. Well, as long as I have this clutch off, I might as well take a quick look at it and, you know, make sure it's okay. Make sure those fiber plates aren't worn out or fiber coming off of them. The first thing is take this large snap ring off and I'll probably get off my fingers if I remember correctly. Okay, here's one of the uh, the metal plates. It looks okay, it's not scratched up or anything. And it's the one that has the springs on it. So there's three posts on this side. You have a long spring, a short spring, and a long spring. And there's three posts on this side, same thing. And we just slide that down in the only way that it'll fit. Now I wanna take a look at the uh, the plates here. And what we have is alternating um, steel and uh, fiber plates. Okay, on the bottom here is a fiber plate. And it's okay, it's got a, quite a bit of meat left on it. it should last, last, we never really run, ride these things anyway. Next one, metal plate. And there's three different types of metal plates. There's one here that each one of these things has like a little V on it or a U. Okay, that, that one goes on first. And what I'm showing now doesn't agree with the parts diagram, but I've taken a few of these apart and this seems to be the way that they always are. So I guess the parts diagrams are wrong. Okay, another fiber plate appears to be okay. Now here's here's a metal plate. Now it has two different types of these tabs. One of them is the U, like on the bottom one, and the, the other one has a hole in it. Again, they alternate all the way around. And we have a fiber plate. And this metal plate, and this one, each one of these tabs has a hole in it. This goes on the on the top. Okay, so I'm going to line these up here. And we look at the middle metal plate, the one with a hole in it, that goes over the short spring. Let's 
to kind of work it down. Okay, then we put the snap ring back on. Try to do it where my hand's not blocking the camera. I keep forgetting that. Okay, it's back together. I gotta clean this. Um, centrifugal uh, filter. And then we can, um, I'm going to end the video here, but the next video, I'll start the uh, reassembly and um, changing the, uh, the oil seals. Okay, well, thank you for watching.